because, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, when I took over as Minister for Tourism, my perception of the industry was low wage, long hours, precarious, right? Mm. And I think the vast majority of people who don't work in the sector, or um, you know, that, that's their perception. And unfortunately, what people tend to do is they, they clump hospital in with tourism. And even though there's crossover, uh, you know, we've, it's the reason why the first thing we tackled with the industry transformation plan is workforce. Mm. You know, we need to create an aspirational um, perception of working in tourism, which doesn't exist at the moment. That's right. And that was the first recommendation that came out of, from the ITP. Though the industry transformation plan does put tourism and hospitality together for the accord, you know, for oh, the, the accord, yeah, no, no, absolutely. And then look, there is recognition that obviously a lot of tourists come into our hospital businesses, and so it's difficult to separate them. But in terms of, you know, if I don't know, if, if my daughter or my son came to me three years ago and said, "I'm keen to work in tourism," mm. I mean, I ran, I, you know, I worked in a high-end lodge on the west coast a long time ago. I would go, "Okay, let's talk about that." Now I'd say, you know what, the world is your oyster. Yeah. You can train her, you can go around the world and do whatever you want. Your, your, you know, your, your, your ex, uh, experiences are as wide as your ambitions. Mm. Do you think you're, the employers are on board, though, with these initiatives to try and raise standards, raise are. wages? Yeah. I mean, you, you'll always find some who aren't, but I think a lot are for two reasons. First of all, they're acknowledging now that workforce is really important, right? If you're to attract and keep really good people, then you need to look after them. And that, that's a combination of... Of, of wages and salary, but it's also a combination of ours, it's the mental health and well-being. And this is something, you know, as a Minister for Small Business, for example, we put first steps into Auckland, which we're going to roll out nationwide. It's recognition that you can't just talk right. about finances when it comes to business. You've got to talk about the health and well-being of your workforce. And I think in a, in a post-pandemic world, people are understanding this. And certainly in a world where labour is short or in, in short supply, that employers are saying, OK, look, how do we attract the good people and how do we retain them? Mm. What is the real sort of main point, the main beauty of this programme and why it's been picked to roll out nationwide? I think it does a really, really good job of acting as that sort of conduit between you know, schools and the education system and tourism. It does one thing really importantly, and I've seen this because I've been visiting these guys for a while, it creates that aspirational uh, vision for what tourism could be, as opposed to oh, you, know, you can go and work in a bar and you know, do this. And, you know, it's it's an in between job between other jobs or or while you're at university or polytech. It is a fa you know it, it really is one of the few organisations that does go out there and talks to students in a way that does really create that aspiration. Yeah. The other thing it does is it's a you know it's a huge um, promoter of tourism generally. Are the sort of the polytechs and the tourism schools and that they're on board with this as well? In fact, there's been an independent review done of the Go with Tourism um, work plan and strategy, yeah. and the educators are the ones who are most uh, enamoured with with what they do. Right. Mm. It just seems like sometimes in these areas, there's a lot of different overlaid programs, mm. some that don't speak to each other. So mm. I'm just wondering if this is what, what you would consider a complete whole solution for tourism. Look. The, it is, a, it is certainly a really good start. And as mentioned, they started in Auckland and we're rolling them out nationwide because of the success that they have had in matching employers with students and aspiration with intentions. And so I think they do a really good job in this. But, you know, the, often it is the experiences. I mean, if, you know, if you've worked in tourism and had a really bad experience and I come to you and say, hey, look, I'm thinking about working for these guys, you know, your advice to me will be clouded by your experience. So there's a whole lot we need to do in terms of creating that aspiration to work in tourism. But it starts with these guys going out to students and, and really do and really creating that aspirational vision for what a career in tourism could look like.